what's up it's joe ready from ready's rise we're back here in the og filming spot location and guess what i have one of those og kind of names that's been in the auto industry for a very long time and it's back this is it this is a 2023 acura integra yes the integra is back and this one is the a spec trim but before we get into this japanese manual transmission equipped yes manual transmission equipped little performance compact car let's talk about what's going on here integra that name brings a lot to people when they hear it it's been there since the beginning of acura itself first year was 1986 that is when honda created acura that premium brand now over the years the acura integra was there it changed its name to rsx here in the united states and then eventually it disappeared well guess what acura wanted to do something very special for the 2023 model year and bring back that name so now sitting on an all-new platform with a new look but you know what from what acura is saying still bringing a lot of fun and a lot of versatility so what i want to find out is there's another vehicle out there that's a compact performance sport vehicle what is that vehicle it's the volkswagen gti i want to go ahead and compare this new acura integra to the gti and see which one you should be spending your money on let's go ahead let's find out which one is the better sport performance car in this segment let's dive into this 2023 integra right off the bat there's been some controversy some debate, some arm wrestling, some mud wrestling, and definitely some tongue wrestling over the shape of it. But let me show you some of the things that I think make it really stand out as an Acura Integra. Starting at the front of the business, I think they hit the nail on the head with their headlight housing. Yes, some people are saying it looks like a TLX, but you know what? That's the whole point, duh, is to have that connection with all the different Acura models in their lineup. So what do we got? This really sharp, slim and thin headlight housing, all darked out on the interior. I love the way they did the multi-jewel LED beam. That's something that Acura brings to the table. Nice, bright LED light. You have your LED turn signal, and then my personal favorite, the LED daytime running lamp that they actually call chicane. Because guess what? Look at that. You're in a race car, ooh, that's your chicane. And what's great about Acura is they still race in the IMSA WeatherTech series. They got an all new prototype car for next year. And they've been doing the business, I promise you that. Now working your way down, you do have functionality. They do have these corner air curtains to help channel the air that hits the front of the vehicle. There's a couple vortex generators to try to clean that air up. You do get functional LED fog lamps. I know a lot of people, with the Civic Si, with some of the other vehicles out there, they're getting rid of fog lamps. You have them here on the Integra. I like the way they kept them nice and small, and there's just a little bit of gloss black, at least on the corner. Now, as we come across that low slung hood, you'll notice something very unique on the A-Spec. It's actually their patented grill shape, but without any kind of perimeter trims. So you have your forward, fascia here that meets to the top of the grill. Everything is functional and I love the way it kind of pulls away from that Acura badge in the center. We work our way down. You have a large kind of elongated, it kind of sticks out on the bottom portion with this functional grill area. I love the way they kind of integrated the splitter very cleanly into that gloss black trim. And then if you look closely, you'll see some bright silver all the way behind there, you do have a nice size intercooler because remember, we do have turbocharged power. Now, if you're comparing this to the GTI, GTI does have LED fog lamps. GTI does have, of course, a turbocharged engine as well. Uh, when it comes to the front, I am liking the look, the clean lines of this Integra, especially with the way they did the grill. And then my favorite part is all the way over here. As we come to the driver's side, Look what we have. That Integra name, just like from day one, stamped right on the front face. You actually have the Acura name on the inside. So Acura Integra. 
So there's the Acura name on that blacked out portion in the headlight housing. And then you have the name stamped there. Very, very smart the way that they did it. Now, when you get up onto that hood, just like the TLX, just like the RDX and the MDX, you get a nice peak. Because remember, it's all about precision crafted performance. You got that nice peak that rises up and then it disappears as you head towards the windshield. And then you got the larger peaks on both sides. Those go right towards the A-pillars. And that's it. Definitely looks like an Acura. Now, as we come around the bend, let's see what we're talking about wheel and tire setup. So on this A-spec, these are the wheels. They're actually shark gray. And what Acura does is they actually go and examine about 36 different species of sharks, including great whites, to come up with this color. So it's a nice metallic dark gray finish, split spoke and design, 18 inch wheel. And if you're wondering, Joe, what's the size of the tires? 235 on the width, 40 series sidewall. You do get larger rotors when you go with the A-Spec and with the manual transmission, you are getting a limited slip diff. So it's front wheel drive, just like the original. You could get a manual transmission, just like the original, and you have a limited slip diff to get the power to the ground. Yes, it's sitting on the same platform as the 11th generation Civic, but all of the sheet metal that you see is unique to the Integra. There's nothing borrowed from the Honda Civic when it comes to the sheet metal, but definitely love the gray on gray. And this is a new color, that beautiful metallic gray. I also like Apex Blue. That personally is my favorite Acura color. Now, as we come down the side, you do have a tasteful badge, that A-Spec badge, and they kind of almost put it in the same place where you have the GTI badge. And remember, when we look at the GTI, GTI does have a limited slip diff. GTI does have larger brake rotors and calipers. So something to think about. But like I said, they really tweaked the chassis to make this handle unique to the Integra. Now, I like the low roof line and how it slopes back into the rear glass area. Do you get a sunroof on the A-spec, which is nice? And they kind of just left everything clean painted. I don't mind that. If it was gloss, if it was painted black, I think that would kind of be a little bit more sportier. So let me know how you feel if they should have just blacked out the whole roof or are you okay with just having the sunroof up top? You do have your color match door handles and then really smooth clean lines on the side. You could tell that extra length and it almost looks like it's moving even though we're sitting still. Now, one of my favorite parts is how they work the quarter window and then the rear pillar here. As the body line comes off the door, it kind of gets flared. And I'm gonna have Steven kind of swing around and show this nice flared fender look. This is something you don't see on the 11th generation Civic. So you got that nice flare and then you'll also notice, like I was telling you, that low roof line coming into the rear glass, because guess what? This is a sport back or a hatchback. This rear portion lifts up. GTI obviously is the original hot hatch. That one has a traditional setup. This one is a little bit more contemporary with its hatchback design. Now, just like up front, they did a great job on the taillights, LED turn signals, LED brake lights. You got the Acura name, deep with inside the Integra name stamped right there since 1986. And then I like what they did with the A-Spec. You have a nice gloss black kick up spoiler. You got your Acura badge, even the way that they designed this, this is specific to the Integra. If you look to the original Integras, this is how it was. You had an opening for your fingers so that you could hit the button and lift up the rear hatch. This little piece of twig is optional. So we'll, Get rid of that, dropping our way down. I like the way they did the exhaust. Nice oval cut, functional exhaust on both sides. So there's the one on the passenger side. We got the one on the driver's side and very clean on that rear diffuser and then a nice simple A-spec badge. That's all you need. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering our Integra. All right guys, we got the hood popped and just to let you know, we have it open in its service mode setting. That actually allows you to open the hood even further. The reason why is Steven demanded a bird's eye view and we got to make Steven happy or he'll be all pissed off. But what do we got? Underneath the hood, no engine covers. So if you ever wonder what does a modern Acura engine look like, 
There she blows right there. They did add an Acura badge, which is a nice little touch. But yes, if you're looking at a Honda Civic Si, you're looking at the same power plant. But is that necessarily a bad thing? We're gonna find out. It's got a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four that produces 200 horsepower on paper. The reason why I say on paper is because there are people that have taken Civic Si's at least, put them on a dyno and have gotten 222 horsepower to the wheels. Now, it has 192 pound-feet of torque. This one is made it to a six-speed manual with the limited slip diff. You could also get a CVT transmission, which is the automatic. Zero to 60 with the manual is about 6.7 seconds. Top speed, 135 miles per hour. MPGs, 26 in the city, 36 on the highway, and the vehicle does weigh around 3,062 pounds. Now, if you compare this to the Civic, excuse me, to the Volkswagen GTI, GTI you could get with a six-speed manual, but you could also get it with a seven-speed dual clutch transmission, which is way better than a CVT. We all know that. The GTI also has front-wheel drive and a limited slip diff, but it's got around a little bit more than 240 horsepower for 2022 and 2023. But you know what? We got the new Integra. We have it here. I got the keys. Why don't we go ahead, if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's fire it up and see if it sounds better than a GTI. Right, guys we're inside the brand new return of the integra for 2023 we got the six-speed manual so don't worry one little bit i know you're saying to yourself well joe does it really does it really do the business and live up to the integra name that's what i'm dying to know i've been looking at gti's i looked at civic si's i even looked at elantra n i really don't know what i want but I am curious about the Integra because none of the dealerships near my house even have one. They don't even know when they're getting one. But how much is this particular one? So this particular one with the tech package, with all the goodies, being an A-spec, you're looking at an MSRP right around $37,000. Price point wise, definitely competes with the GTI when you're looking at price point. Let's see how it does when it comes to the interior. To the door panels, I like the nice, clean, familiar style. So up top, you got that soft touch material, a little bit of like aluminum finish for the door handle there to open up the door. We got the ELS Studio 3D premium sound system with the multi-speakers, nice aluminum speaker grill cover, the trim, and I love the two-tone with the red. It really brings a little something extra to the interior. Door pocket, maybe a Whopper, I don't think a quarter pounder. So I would go Burger King Whopper and a nice bottle of Pepsi to wash it down, even get a small fry in there. But going from the door panel to the dash, I know some people would say, hey, that looks like an 11 generation SI, but here's the difference. You do have the wire mesh, but they keep it just inside the AC vent itself. The rest of it is that no fingerprint material and I like the way it's not just gloss black. Another area where they put a little bit more than the SI is the soft touch all the way around this bottom portion here. Now as we slide on in, yes, that infotainment system is going to look very familiar. That is the 9 inch out of the Honda Civic SI. I zonk it because first of all, these gray colors, they get washed out in the sun. I wish that it did a, something a little bit more I do like the fact you can move all the widgets around, plus nice quick swipe features. You go into vehicle settings. What's nice about this is this is where you could adjust, like especially driver uh, assist. You go in here and here's where you can actually slide and turn on and off the rev match system. So you could go on or off. 
I'm gonna go ahead and for the beginning, we're gonna leave it on, but then eventually we'll turn it off. The reason why I'm gonna zonk it, that's too many steps. It should just be one button. And then we're right back to home. I'm gonna throw it in reverse. A little small on the backup camera and it's a little bit on the grainy side. The good news is though, you can not you know change up the angle, which is nice. Plus you got the sensory technology. Uh, hopefully you're not gonna bump anybody that's walking around your Integra. You do have, of course, the wire mesh, more of that no fingerprint. I like that material. You do get the same exact AC controls, but that necessarily isn't a bad thing because I'm telling you, it feels just like a Wells Fargo safe from the late 1800s with the way it clicks. We got three stages of heated seats, no ventilated seats. That's another zonk at $37,000. You do get a USB-C, USB-A, and a 12 volt close that up, wireless charging, and then this is really where you make the butter. This is where you're gonna just churn from one gear to another. Nice short throws, crisp engagement. I like the way they did the shift knob with the shift pattern, the red stitching, the red stitching on the shift boot. A little bit of aluminum trim. I'm gonna move this out of the way so that Steven could show you the dynamic mode selector. You got your different modes, and I'm gonna show more of that in a split second. And the one other thing I got a zonk is the gloss black. But I'm gonna have Steven kind of focus back on the screen because I wanna show you the Gran Turismo graphics. So there's normal, who the hell wants that? There's sport, your Integra's on fire. That's how fast you are. And then of course you could do individual or comfort. We're gonna leave it in sport, I promise you that. Now coming back to the center console area, I don't love the gloss black. I wish they would have used that no fingerprint material. You got two nice, Deep cup holders, you do get a new key fob with the Acura badge there, spin it around. There's your buttons with the Acura name. Semi-soft on this armrest, lift it up, and you got enough room in there, I would say, for three signed baseballs. Don Maddenly, maybe uh, Raleigh Fingers, and maybe a Jose Canseco before he did the roids. It's gotta be before he did the roids or the signature is worth nothing. It's not even worth the ball that it's printed on. And yes, I just said that. Seats, you got the nice leather material. You got the microfiber suede. I like the way they bring some black to match the red. You do have, of course, electric assist for the passenger, electric assist for the driver. You're not getting that in a Civic Si. Seats are comfy and then you do have a standard size sunroof, which is a nice touch. But why don't you come over here? I got a steering wheel with the A-Spec name on it. I wanna show you, come on over. All right guys, business time. This is where the drivers sit. And when I mean drivers, that's what we're talking about right there. You got your triple pedal set up, nice aluminum clutch, brake pedal and throttle. My only zonk that I keep doing is on Hondas and Acuras, I would like an aluminum dead pedal. You do have the A-Spec carpets. That's an additional five horsepower. Plus we got the A-Spec aluminum sill plate. That's another nice touch, but no extra horsepower. Only for the, the uh, floor mats. Now you do have your seat controls. Lots of good position, especially with that lower lumbar. You do have two memory seat settings. So if you're crazy enough, you can let somebody borrow your new Integra. Hopefully they won't burn out your clutch because they do this with the gas pedal and right in the clutch. But anyways, I'm six feet tall. You got plenty of headroom. So that's really nice. And then the steering wheel, just like on the Civic Si, Acura does a great job. Nice red stitching all the way around. You got your A-Spec badge, the Acura badge, flat black on the buttons. It is manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And then the cherry on top of this Sunday is actually 10 inches big. It's a 10.2 inch infotainment system screen. What am I saying infotainment? Digital gauge cluster. Look at the little Integra there in the center. That's the augmented reality shows your brakes and also show the cars around you and the lines on the road and you got your different modes. So when you go into normal, that's what the graphics look like. You go into comfort, that's what they look like. I'm gonna go back into sport here and then I'm gonna show you something, watch this. You ready? You could actually use the thumb wheels drives to go through different information. Now that's a nice extra touch. Plus you got a head up display, but looking at that, easy to read. Easily set up, the steering wheel doesn't block any of the view, 
But why don't we go ahead, let's get in the back seat and see if your passengers are going to like it as you corner and carve those corners just like a Thanksgiving Day turkey in your Integra. Hi guys, back seat time and this is where the 11 generation Civic really shows its true colors, not just the Civic, but also of course this Integra since they sit on the 11th generation platform. Lots of room back here. I'm still six feet tall, even with that low, sexy sloping roof line, still got plenty of headroom. You got the bright red all the way around the seats. The bummer is no pocket if you're sitting behind the driver. So if you have yourself a nice calzone, you're gonna have to keep it in between your legs. And if you get too excited th going through the twisty bits, you might squeeze your legs and there goes mozzarella all over the back seat of this beautiful interior. Hopefully I'm not sitting back there with you. What we do have, two USB A's, at least they gave us some connectivity. Would have been a nice extra touch to have the AC vents. I got my own pocket, so my special Sicilian calzone can slide right in there. The good news is I'm feeling really good back here. Watch this, this is my favorite. It is so soft. Unbelievable why they can't use some of that material up front, but I'm glad it's back here for the back seat passengers. And you got the two cup holders. But why don't we go ahead? This does not have a trunk. It's got a cargo area underneath a hatchback or a sport bag. Let's go check it out and see what we can fit back there. All right, guys. Of course, one of the big separators between this and a Civic Si, which actually aligns it a little bit closer to a GTI, is the rear hatch area. So real simple. You just hit the button, lift it up, voila. Look at how much room you have. First of all, of course, we got our Twinkie cargo net, not just for one Twinkie, not just for two Twinkies, for a box, full box of Twinkies. On the passenger side, we got the hidden piece of the puzzle for that ELS Studio 3D sound system. That is the subwoofer to give us that dump a dump dump sound. Of course, the seats will fold down to give you even more room, but how much room do we have? That's the big question. You're basically looking at about 29 cubic feet of space with the seats up. Fold the seats down. Obviously, the numbers even go higher, but you know what? For me, it's not just about how much space we got for our track day Twinkies, but it's about the on-throttle experience. If you're ready, I'm ready. Let's go on throttle with our six-speed manual Integra. All right, guys, we're inside this 2023 Acura Integra. I do have it in sport mode, and if you're ready, I'm ready. On right, throttle, here we go, yeah! <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. Love the six-speed manual transmission. And then, of course, the steering communication that you get with this car is so much different than a Volkswagen GTI on the brakes <laughs> look at this nice short throws crisp engagement <laughs> I'm telling you it's exactly what the doctor ordered. A big old freaking bottle of F. A lot of fun in this Integra. The 10 inch digital display, very easy to read, very crisp graphics. Where everything is laid out, it makes sense. Like the Volkswagen GTI, you know, you're getting that sporty feel. You know that you're in something definitely more performance oriented. There is sound being pumped in. Same thing with the GTI. I don't mind it in the Integra uh, as much, to be honest with you. It actually sounds like most of it's coming out of the exhaust. So they did a really good job there. The gearbox obviously is not gonna be as direct as a Civic Type R, but you are getting some really short throws and the engagement is crisp. They've gotten rid of a lot of the rev hang that used to be in the tent gen Civic Si and of course the limited slip diff 
allows you to get the power down very, very effectively. Guys, this time from a slow roll, on throttle, first gear, here we go. Nice. I'm telling you, this car has some get up and go and it is so much fun. Look at this, on the brakes, third gear, that automatic red match downshift doing the magic for you. Really love the way the car transitions left to right. And another thing I noticed is that the 1.5 liter turbocharged engine does pull very nicely through the torque range. And obviously they did some tweaking with the ECU of where that peak torque is starting and where it builds up to in that crescendo. I do wish the head up display had a little bit more performance orientation, but remember, there is a Type S version of this car coming. Acura is working on it. I'm sure you've seen the spy shots. Seats, comfy. I would like a little bit more bolstering. Definitely a little bit more bolstering, but they look better than the GTI seats and they're way more comfortable. Plus, I like the way it's all electric assist and the colors. The colors in here really pop nicely. All right, guys, we got to do some more on throttle. Of course, like I say, a chirping tire is a happy tire. If you're ready, I'm ready. On throttle, here we go, yeah! <laughs> nice. Look at this. On those brakes. Nice and balanced. I like the way when you get towards red line, the tag flashes bright red. I'm telling you, man, front wheel drive is hooking up in this thing. You really go deep on the brakes. really nicely done uh, you know the placement of where the shifter is the height of the actual shift lever uh, I do like the way there's these touches in here that you got to get into it you got to sit in one of these you are going to feel a difference between this and the Civic Si this definitely feels more upscale for sure and you're getting that usability that flexibility from the sport back design and I think that's really where they hit the nail on the head. It, it's, it's a fun car, man. Yes, I would like some more performance, but it is coming. The Type S is coming. This was not meant to be a Type R version of, uh, you know, the second gen Integras. This thing really kind of has a, a spot in Acura's lineup, and it, and it really does belong. It really does. All right, guys, slow roll, second gear, 4,000 RPM, on throttle. On the brakes. Really allows you to carry that momentum very nicely. And here's where the balance shines. Yeah, look at this. Really, really feels freaking fantastic. All right, guys, one more time for you. Definitely one more time for me. This car is very, very well balanced and loves to dance. But if you're ready, I'm definitely ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> I tell you, torque steer is very, very limited in this thing, which is nice for being a front wheel drive car. Here we go, this is the best part right here. On those brakes. Nice. Look at the weight transfer there. On the brakes, I'm telling you, the, 
auto rev match downshift works so well in this car so well and i really like the augmented reality in the center there you know when you're driving around having that display really that's another piece of the Acura puzzle that you're not getting in the Civic Si but I'm hoping that this kind of shows what kind of sport performance sedan this Acura Integra is especially the A-spec trim with the manual transmission the heck with the CVT uh, I definitely think that this is a fun fun car to drive and there's something that Honda and Acura does with their steering and their suspension that outshines the Volkswagen GTI. But we're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been a hot and fun kind of day out here in sunny Florida. Definitely wanna thank the whole Acura and Honda team for allowing us access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Has Acura done enough to make this a better, sport compact performance style car than a volkswagen gti especially this one with the six-speed manual and the limited slip diff let me know in that comment section but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out hit that subscribe button i promise you it's worthwhile come back for more if you are a subscriber thank you for being part of the radius rides family we got to give it up to stephen flood stephen flood photography you know what he just got another tattoo of an integra the original integra type r on his back to add with his Civic Type R tattoo. So really cool looking tattoo, Steven. I know we will show the fans one day. Show Steven some love in that comment section, just like always, guys. I'll see you on the next ride.